Okay, so the last speaker of this session is Hyungyu Park. The title is uh, Speed Limit for Highly Reversible Process and Tight Finite Time Runners Part. Please start. Thanks, Takayo. Uh, you hear me well? Uh, yes, yeah. Okay. And also thanks to the organizers. And also good morning to people in Europe, but good afternoon and evening to people in Asia, especially in Japan and Korea, this is dinner time. So I'm kind of very hungry already. So I'll try to finish as soon as possible. Um, uh, today I'd like to present uh, our recent work at TIAS on very tight classical speed limit, in particular in a very highly uh, irreversible regime and its application to the Landauer's memory erasing pr process, which is necessary for the high high speed computing. You can find the details in this uh, well, in this uh, preprint uh, uploaded in last May, last April. Sorry. Okay. Okay. This is our line. I'll talk. I'll introduce what is speed limit, and in the Second chapter, uh, I'll try to show you the very simple derivation of very tight classical speed limit, including the, all the conventional uh, classical speed limit found in literature in the last four, three or four years. Um, then I'll try to show you the how to apply to the Landau's found. And this is my collaborator, Professor Jason Lee, Dr. Sang Yun Lee and Professor Hyuk Jun Kwan. Okay, what is speed limit? Speed limit is something like that. Is it possible to change a, change one state to another in instantaneously? Or do you need some kind of bound? You need at least some, you know, the fundamental bound which uh, restrict your speed. So in historically, it was uh, investigated in the closed quantum system when you change from one state to another, the time duration for this change needs some kind of this kind of a fundamental bound. People call this a quantum speed limit. And the uh, numerator is the measuring the distance between these two states. And the denominators are basically energy fluctuation divided by the Planck constant. This is very much like a energy time uncertainty relation pointed out by the Heisenberg a long time ago. And this distance is well, many ways you can define in quantum mechanics, but rather recently uh, people found another type of quantum speed limit, which is basically deno denominated uh, energy, mean energy value at the final time minus ground state energy. But anyway, I'm interested in the classical systems. And if you naively thinking, what is the, uh, what happened to the classical speed limit? If you take H bar goes to zero limit, naive quantum, uh, classical limit, then obviously this, when you take H bar goes to zero limit, then this guy go, going to zero. So maybe you, you think this quantum speed limit is just a quantum mechanical genuine property. So you cannot find any uh, uh, any useful classical speed limit in classical system. However, only a few years ago, these two groups found this is not true, and there is a classical speed limit. And because this derivation of this quantum speed limit is not really depending on the non-commutativity, which is a generic property of quantum mechanics, but basically distribution evolution. You know, in, in classical system, of, of course you can have, you can also thinking about the dis, uh, evolution of distribution. So right after that, uh, Shirai Shifuna in this Japanese group derived the classical speed limit in this way. And if you look at the denominator, this is the total entropy production during the process from zero to the time tau, 
And this is so-called mean average activity per unit time. And this numerator is kind of measuring the distance between the T's to initial distribution and final distribution. It, it is called total variation distance. I'm going to, I will tell you about the details a little bit later. But they found this kind of classical speed limit. Of course, you, it, this means in order to reduce this class of limit, speed limit to zero, you have to pay a lot of entry to production. It means a lot of cost. So this is kind of another type of uh, trade-off relation. They found something, you know, the similar one too, a little bit different using the not total entry production, but so-called Hatanasasa entry production. So here I, I'm considering the uh, Markovian uh, continuous time jump dynamics, which is, you know, the, I, I think everybody know in this, in this conference, you if this is discrete state space and you're staying for a while in some state and jump to another state and jump and jump, that kind of uh, jump dynamics you're considering. And uh, for notation, I, I put the row and T is a probability of the system being in state N at time T. And R and M is a transition rate from state M to the N at time T. Look at, you know, that I'm using the time dependent transition rate in general. So our uh, result applies to the all, you know, the time dependent transition rate programs. Obviously, you know, the uh, probability change in time is composed of two things, so an incoming probability and outgoing probability. And also people, like to uh, abbreviate this notation by introducing the diagonal part, which is minus of some of all escape rate, which basically uh, represent this guy. The question is, you're starting from the sum distribution in at the beginning and asking about uh, you want to you want to change this di distribution something else at after time tau. And is there any kind of restriction for the tau? Okay, so uh, later use, I define the probability current is nothing but the inside of this bracket and incoming and outgoing. So you can re uh, write this equation this way. Also, you can easily uh, write down the mean entropy production rate, thanks to the Schneckenberg, you know, the entry production coming out only when you have a jump. So you jump from M to the N and this is reverse, forget about the star at the moment. This is just a reverse the ratio and take a log, this is entropy production. So then probability to jump uh, multiplied to this guy is basically average entropy production rate. It can be written using probably current only using an energy larger than that. So if you forget about the, this star, that means this star process is same as the original process, then this uh, entry production is total entry production. But if you use some special different uh, uh, dynamic uh, process, so-called using, you know, the a little bit different one. This is, uh, you can see that this, the order is, uh, is reversed and this is so-called ratio of instantaneous steady state. If you use this guys in there, then the answer is Hatanasasa at the production. One thing you should note is escaping probability for the both process exactly the same, you can easily uh, derive this. The second important quantity, as I already advertised in the previous, uh, pre previous page, activity rate. The activity rate is basically how many jumps uh, uh, occurring in independent of the direction of the uh, jump. So if you take that n is larger than n, this a and m is sum of this 
점, m to the n 점, and n to the m 점, both are just adding up. So after you define these two things, the crucial step for the very simple derivation of classical speed limit is considering so-called normalized jump probability. You see that this RNM rho m divided by a dot, you define this is some, uh, some quantity q, and obviously this is normalized because you will sum over all n and m is, that's a definition of a dot. Same way, you can define this guy, R M N star at rho n. This is also by uh, normalized by dividing by this a dot. You can easily check that. As soon as you uh, rewrite all these things uh, in this entropy production expression, R N M rho M is a dot times Q, and these guys are Q divided by Q tilde. So this is nothing but the so-called callback libel divergence. So in this normalized jump probability, entry production can be written very simple way. Uh, activity rate multiplied by the callback libel divergence over these two probability distribution. Uh, one thing one should note is if you're thinking about the total entry products only, forget about the, this Hatano Sasa, then this star is, for, uh, there is no star then, then, you know, the Q and Q tilde, Q tilde, whatever you exchange Q and Q tilde, it must be the same, the same entry production. So for the total entry production, this Kulbeck libel divergence is symmetric by itself. Uh, Usually, in general, Kullback libel divergence is not symmetric, but for total entry production, it is symmetric. It's a very important uh, property later on I, I will use. So entry production is defined by the Kullback libel divergence of Q and Q tilde. And now I'm trying to rewrite the total variation distance. This is a distance between the initial distribution and final distribution in terms of Q and Q tilde, sorry, <clears throat> Q and Q tilde. This is a definition of a total variation distance, which is, is difference in component by component and absolute value. Then this is obviously larger than zero, but should be less than one. If you think about this guy, this is nothing but the uh, integral of a row dot from zero to the tau. So if you get integral outside, then you know that this one is always larger than this one, obviously. Equality happens when, when you have a monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing product. This is obvious. So I look at this guy a little bit more. This one is, I put the definition of equation motion. This is equation of motion, rho dot is, should satisfy this equation of motion and absolute value. And as, as I said before, you know, the Katano Sasa entry production and uh, total entry production, both case, this R and R star has same escape rate. So I can uh, freely put this star here. So, whether you have a star or not, it is always the same thing. Then I put this absolute value inside of this summation, then obviously this is larger than this guy. As soon as you write this way, you can already see this one is nothing but a dot q, and this one is a dot q tilde. If you look at this, this is the definition of total variational distance of Q and Q tilde. So this is something that. So I said, I derived this total variational distance of initial and final distribution is only smaller than the integral over time of this quantity. This is total variational distance between the Q and Q tilde. Remember, entry production rate is Kullback libel divergence of Q and Q tilde. So only thing, what you, only thing we have to do to relate entry production and the 
total variational distance and thinking about what is, is there any kind of relation between the Kohlberg Leibler and total variational distance. It is well known in the probability theory. So we, we borrow some, you know, the, this, uh, borrow the result from the probability theory people. This Kohlberg Leibler divergence is always larger, larger than this uh, total variational distance through the function h. People derive this function in many, many different ways. The oldest one is Pinsker in 1960, it's very simple. But there are many, many complicated uh, functions uh, derived by mathematicians. So this one, but you know, if you go here, then a little bit tighter than this guy. For, but for the symmetric kullback libeler divergence, you have a little bit better uh, tight function, tight this H function. It's obvious that even for the symmetric pullback libeler divergence, all these HX function can be, re can be replaced this HS e easily. But you have uh, one more uh, found by Gladoni in 208. It's very simple form. And turns out to be this function is tightest among all the others. So basically, uh, noting that this this is the very tightest tight function, we're gonna use this relation to derive the uh, relation between the, this total variational distance and entropy production. That's the whole point. And HX is, turns out to be the convex function, monotonically increasing all, all, all these H function. Then we are ready to derive the final result. Total variational distance from this derivation is smaller than integral of DT of all these things, A dot times DT. But DT is smaller than the inverse of H function of D. But D is basically uh, entry production divided by A dot. So I just replace everything in, in here. Then you can easily show an H inverse because H, H is convex, H inverse is concave. Then you can easily show by a transient inequality in, putting the integral inside of this guy. Then you have a relation. This A tau is a sub integral of uh, activity rate from to, for the uh, whole process from zero to tau. This is entropy production is also the same thing. It defined in the integral of the time from zero to tau. So this is the this is the result. So I rewrite the result again. And for convenience, I put this a tau into the, into the denominator here and take the inverse function. Then sigma star divided by a tau is larger than h of function over dt over a tau. I, now I, I, I'll omit the, this uh, rho tau rho zero, these uh, variables for simplicity. Okay, this is basically main result. What is what this mean? What is relate? How is this guy related to the speed limit? It's convenient to, to rewrite this guy by divided by two x. X is this uh, argument. Dt over eight tau. This is average distance change per jump. Then of course you divide by here is two x, and you have two dt instead of eight tau coming up. I will define this hx divided by 2x as gx, new function. And you can also show gx is a monotonically increasing function for all h functions we listed in, in the previous page. Now you are ready because, because you write on this gx, you take the inverse of the whole thing, then x is smaller than inverse of this function, but x is this guy. So 
you you make the upside down dt and a tau is upside down then you this is the result so a tau is g inverse function of this guy and dt is upside down now you are thinking about because a tau is a total activity rate and thinking about mean activity per unit time then obviously by definition this is duration time times mean activity per unit time is the total. So you just put it here. Then obviously you have a tau is, now here is a, a mean activity per time is divided in, in the denominator. This is classical speed limit. It's very simple derivation. If you use the Pinsker function HX, the most simple function but, uh, found by Pinsker and 2x square, and you have 2x square, then gx is just x, then g inverse x is also x. So it, this, this guy just coming out. Then this is nothing but that. This is exactly what Shirai Shifuno Saito found in four years ago. Entry production and activity rate, and this is total variation distance square. But we already, as I said already, this H function, this Pinsk function is not tight function. There are more and more tightest function. For example, this is the quite tightest, but I'm looking at the, uh, only looking at the total entry production. So that's a symmetric case. So I'll use this guy. This is known as the tightest among all H function. And if you divide, sorry, if you divide by two x, one then one half of log of this guy is nothing but the tangent hyperbolic inverse function. You need a g inverse. So what is this? This is just a tangent hyperbolic. So this is a final. Quantum is classical speed limit. Time must be bounded by this guy. This is a tightest one for the total entry production. If you draw the y-axis tau as normalized and x-axis is the inverse of this guy, then this basically, this is one over tangent hyperbolic. And because I use the inverse of this variable, this is one over x, cotangent hyperbolic of x is something like that. And this red line is, the conventional speed limit found by Shrai, Shelfuno, and Saito is this. As you see, this bound is always tighter than this bound everywhere. When, where the entropy production is small, small means you are going this way, this bound is very close to each other, but entropy production is large coming in, then this bound is really uh, makes a difference. Moreover, this tangent hyperbolic function cannot be larger than one. So this, this guy has a bound something like that, which only uh, is nothing to do with entry production. Uh, this is only bounded by the activity. People call this a fundamental bound because tau and a bar is basically total entry production and total activity. So this means in order to change the distribution, you at least you have to jump once. Obviously there must be a fundamental bound, which can be, which, which is derived uh, automatically from this kind of uh, study. The similar bound like this, was reported very recently about five or six months ago by the Chant and Falasca Esposito uh, Del Ben. This is a little bit different from ours. So we are also looking at and comparing our bound to theirs. So now uh, we are ready to apply our result to the Landau bound. So Landau bound, you are, you are thinking of finite time erasing process. You have one bit memory, zero or one state. So 
distribution is only by the row zero and row one. And we are thinking about uh, one half one half initial distribution. And finally, you just put everything into the one state. This is, you can think about the memory erasing process. So this memory erasing process is nothing but the uh, distribution changing process. So obviously classical speed limit we calculate can be applied. So this is the uh, classical speed limit form we derived in the previous page and GX is tightest one is tangent hyperlinkers. And DT is easily calculate one half, one half sum and one half. So this is one half, so this is whole one. So entry production is larger than GX. And if you divide entry production to the system and the Clausius entropy, then you can find the, you know, the rather uh, familiar one, lambda bound, heat dissipation must be larger than log two in the one bit erasing process in the very high, uh, in the almost reversible limit. But as soon as you go, uh, you are out of the reversible limit, you have an extra term and people calculate this extra term in a, you know, one of a tau expansion in many, uh, many ways, but this is analytic form is known is tangent hyperbolic inverse. So if you draw this entropy pro production whole thing to the, to the y-axis and this x-axis is also x to the inverse for convenience, then you see that if you, if you, go, if you approach this fundamental bound, it is diverging. And this is a conventional bound, which is just a finite. And this divergence is low. That's a tangent hyperbolic functions property. So fractal computation requires very fast computation, fast erasing process. And also if you want to be a very fast and tau is very small, then you have to have a, a strong driving, but there is a bound. So you have, you know, to go to this uh, practical computation uh, limit, then you have, you are going into this highly irreversible limit. This means a little, lot of cost. However, this divergence in law is rather, you know, the good divergence compared to the power law, because it is as even if you are very close to, to this fundamental limit, 10 to the minus four, still entry production over heat, this patient is only four times bigger. So it is diverging, but it is quite tolerable. We also set up the explicit protocol, how to, how to erase this memory by taking a, some kind of local detail balance type of uh, uh, model is basically you have two states in the same energy, you abruptly going up, uh, moving up the, this state with energy, energy larger than this guy. Then you turn on the react uh, jumping between R10 and R01. Then obviously this guy going down then you later on, you want to go down this kind of process, then you can erase your memory by doing that. In this uh, explicit pro the model, you can cal calculate the uh, distribution function analytically very easily. So that means you can calculate entry production, heat and everything activity, uh, 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 in a closed form. So this is the our numerical plot by changing the many, many, many parameters in the model. So we change the many, many parameters and calculate the entry production rate and also this uh, duration time. Then this cross, gray cross is a, uh, those data numerically calculated from the closed form expression. And 
this uh, sky blue one is the hour bound. It's really tight and all other bounds are very loose. Also, this means is this numerical data actually touch the bound. Oops, sorry, touch the bound. And you can also calculate optimal protocol for touching this, uh, uh, this speed limit bound is something very simple. So this is summary. Uh, we found the tightest classical speed limit. And we think this is tightest because two bit example, you can show, you can really touch this limit. This means at least for the two bit, uh, one bit system, you cannot find the better bound than this guy. And from this study we learned for high speed computing, you need a very fast memory erasing process. We learned cost significantly more than expected because it is diverging. However, because of least log divergence, it is rather tolerable. This is all I want to report today. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's not time for questions and comments. Uh, Let me ask. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this process is for uh, Markovian. This uh, whole theory is for Markovian processes, right? Markovian if, jump system. Yeah. So, in uh, do you expect? Of course, there there will be some changes. But if someone want to introduce memory into it, like Markovian processes, then how this speed limits will be? modified or do you have any expectation like uh i don't know <laughs> actually people this is a very uh people are uh, trying to find the classical speed limit in this markovian jump system as far as i know uh and also open quantum system described by described by the lindeblad equation but non-Markovian systems, uh, nobody studied, and we don't know what will happen. So sorry, I, I cannot answer to your question at this moment. OK. And uh, in case uh, this Markovian process, if it is in equilibrium process, then like No, no, it's, uh, uh, this uh, uh, transition rate is time dependent. Hmm. General, so this 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 our result apply to the so called time dependent protocol dynamics. Yes. So it is you can be anything in non non conservative whatever you, you think of it generally apply. Okay. So there is a question in chat. Yeah. Question what? Uh, question, uh, there is a question on chat. So somehow I cannot see the chat chatting. Oh, I see. I, I can read it. So the what question is, I missed something. What is the difference between the sorry, what's that? Girar Doni bound and the symmetric care bound? Real. Symmetric and asymmetric is to kill what? So the question is about the difference between the Girardoni bound and the symmetric. Oh, oh, bound. I understand. So you are talking about. I have to go anything further. So this is. Giladoni bound, oops, uh, I went too fast. <coughs> I use this bound, 
Gladoni wrote a paper in two, uh, two papers. One is about this guy, which he applied to the general, uh, general cooler level of divergence, which, including, which includes asymmetric or symmetric. But he also uh, find out if this is symmetric, there is a tighter bound than this guy. So this is both guys Giladoni. So I'm not sure which Giladoni you're talking about. I'm using this. And this derivation of this inequality of symmetric, this guy and uh, Kulbeck libel and total variation of distance is very simple. I, I'm not gonna show you today, but it takes about five lines of calculation to show this H, this function is really uh, bounds to, to the symmetric kullback libel divergence. For the total entropy, when you write in this form, uh, for the total entropy, this kullback libel divergence is by itself symmetric. But Hatanosasa entropy production, this is not by itself symmetric. So only uh, they are asymmetric in general. So in that case, you have to use this Giladoni bound, which is less tighter than this guy. I'm not sure that this it answers to your question. Okay, so yeah, and let me ask a question. So you claim that in the short time region, the Schleiss bound is weak and your bound is much tighter. And, the, and in the short time regions, for example, there is a divergence um, of the heat dissipation with respect yeah. to the accuracy of the information yeah. region. So is there any relationship between that result and the uh, so-called speed and accuracy trade-off or yeah. so dissipation? Dispersion accuracy speed trade off uh, considered by you, Hai Tu, or somebody in the context of chemical taxes? I don't know. Okay. So, I yeah. So, yeah. I was wondering. Uh, but actually, yeah. uh, this bound yeah. is tighter in all regions. Hmm. It's not only this short time region, yeah. but it's a long time region too. Okay. Usually, this bound is less tight bound. This has a switch over with this uh, with the Schreich. So Schreich mm. bound is tighter in the long time regime, but mm. this bound is tighter everywhere. Okay. And in the short time region, there is some divergence. Yes, sure. right. okay. because of this tangent hyperbolic has a has a has a, this fundamental bound. Okay, I see. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.